you can have some AMLs where uh, a patient will come in with a low white blood cell count and yes, you've, you know, if they're, uh, if they're refractory to conventional therapy and you try a few more rounds and they're still kind of resistant or refractory, uh, you can at least maintain them with transfusions, maybe a few antibiotics. They can actually go, um, while it's not ideal, you're not going to cure them, you can at least palliate them effectively. This is a difficult population even to palliate because it's so explosive in its growth. You have to use, um, you know, say hydroxyurea, which if you have to use hydrea to control FLITS three IgD AML, the patient quickly gets just horrifying mucositis because of the doses you have to use to control the proliferative nature of this disease. So from a, in the relapse refractory population, trying to palliate this group, it's, it's pretty much, they're as hopeless as you get. In the upfront setting, we all kind of know this when they come in, these high white count with a FLIT3 mutation, we can see that, okay, we might beat them into remission, but they are going to relapse. They're sort of these ticking time bombs. Uh, and this, of course, is, you know, these were these high-risk patients for years that would relapse. We could never get them to transplant. They'd relapse before you could get them to even to transplant. So um, there, uh, there's always lots of excitement when a FLIT3 patient wanders on in because the white count's high and you're frantically trying to control the disease. They, they re these patients represent a substantial portion of our inpatient population sitting up there trying to get into remission you know, long enough to get them to a transplant.